If you've played Minecraft before, there's a good chance you've crafted a map at least once. But have you ever seen one do this? What you're looking at is not an illusion or a mod, it's a legitimate map. Players on the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft have found a way to make three-dimensional maps and in the process have weaponized them. What was supposed to be a fun novelty at first has ended up as one of the most catastrophic crash exploits in 2B2T's history. These maps have crashed the server multiple times over the past week, with the downtime often lasting hours. They've caused massive amounts of lag to everyone online, completely brought the queue server offline, and can even soft ban players from the server if they're in the same chunk as one. It is completely different from previous crash exploits, which is why it's been so destructive and hard to deal with. So why has a simple Minecraft item been capable of causing so much chaos? Today we'll be discussing how 3D Minecraft maps were weaponized on 2B2T and the technical explanations behind the exploit. We'll even see these maps cause havoc in person on the actual server and witness the fallout of them being pushed to the absolute limit. I've played on 2B2T for over 8 years and I've never seen anything quite like this, so buckle up. This is a pretty crazy exploit, but I do have an announcement before we start. You know how in the past Honey has sponsored several of my videos? They recently told me that all the FitMC fans that have used it saved a combined total of almost $30,000 on their online purchases. That's insane. If you don't know, Honey is the free online shopping tool that searches the internet for promo codes and applies them to your shopping cart automatically. When you're checking out from online retailers, a little box will drop down. Click apply coupons and it searches the internet for promo codes and boom, you just saved money. Online shopping is at record highs so it's a great time to look for deals. Honey works on lots of your favorite websites. If you don't want to waste money, make sure to get Honey. It doesn't cost anything and finds coupons with a click. It's legit. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash fitmc. That's joinhoney.com slash fitmc. Now then, let's get started. So who exactly was the first person to figure out how to do this on 2B2T? Well, it all started a few weeks ago. A player named City Boss was playing around with maps in single player. He made an area full of item frames and different copied maps. During this process, one accidentally glitched and the markers on it became 3D, which caused his game to start lagging. He didn't understand what was happening, so he brought it to the attention of his friend Rebane, who's a known map artist in the community. Rebane was surprised, but he knew exactly what was happening. He gave an in-depth explanation as to how it worked. In the Java version of Minecraft, a green marker on a map represents an item frame, and this marker is placed onto the map as a two-dimensional icon. Normally, if two or more markers were in the same location, it would cause visual tearing, also known as Z-fighting. To get around this, Minecraft maps are programmed to put the icons slightly on top of each other to prevent this tearing from happening. So anytime you see a marker on a map, it's not actually touching it. Most of the time, this effect is not noticeable, but once thousands of markers start showing up, it becomes very clear that they are being stacked in a three-dimensional space. Once you get up to around a thousand markers, the maps begin to require additional resources to render. This puts a strain on computers, causing FPS lag and other issues. If they were starting to lag at just 1,000 markers, what would happen at 10,000, or 100,000, or even higher? They hopped on a testing server to try it out and their results were absolutely insane. They found a way to duplicate the map markers by going in and out of the nether. This allowed them to stack more markers without requiring additional item frames, so they could, in theory, stack the icons forever. But it turns out, there was a hard limit. When enough markers were in render distance, it dropped your frames per second low enough to effectively crash your game. To get around this, they developed a mod that would hide the icons from their screens, preventing the crash. With the frame rate issue solved, they attempted to make the icon stack as large as possible. But this brought about a new issue. The map was becoming so big that it was sending too many data packets to the testing server, causing it to become unstable. If multiple copies of the maps were placed in the same location, 
it completely crashed the server. The fact that this exploit was capable of crashing someone's game, as well as the server they were on, made it especially dangerous, and both City and Rebane realized how powerful it would be on 2B2T. The maps did have some weaknesses, though. If the server restarted, it would remove every duplicated marker from the map, so they would have to be added again. And because 2B2T had far more powerful hardware than their testing server, it would require a greater number of maps to crash. But it was clear that City and Rebane had effectively found a way to weaponize maps, but just how much destruction could they cause? It turns out, a lot. The two began sharing knowledge of the exploit, and they started testing their first map. They called it the Pop Bob Crash Map as a joke since they knew how much chaos it was going to cause. On the first day of the exploit being used, they managed to kick many unsuspecting players back into the queue with it, and were able to discreetly start lagging the server. After hearing about what was happening, I was invited to come see the map in person. I still had one of my alt accounts at the Valley of Wheat, so I requested they meet me there. They showed up and quickly began the demonstration. I was handed a map with 40,000 markers on it. Just holding it in my hands brought my frames per second from 600 to 36. When they started placing multiple copies of it in item frames, it dropped even lower, eventually crawling all the way down to just two. Looking away from the maps was the only way to not get lagged out. If my PC were any weaker, I would have easily crashed out of Minecraft altogether. One poor soul that showed up went too close to the maps and actually had his game crash while he was suspended in mid-air. Having multiple players around these maps caused the server to begin lagging even more, and that was only with 40,000 markers. They told me they were planning on making a map with even more. I knew things were about to go from bad to worse. The next day, a new map was constructed that contained hundreds of thousands of markers. When I visited this map, all it took was just one of them in render distance to bring my frames per second down to zero. What you are seeing on screen is real-time footage, not screenshots, so even my top-of-the-line gaming PC couldn't handle a single map. The stack of markers at this point extended over eight Minecraft blocks away from the map itself, and I was even able to see the markers extend in real time. At that point, I was instructed not to pick up the map itself, as just having it in your inventory would automatically kick you from the server for sending too many data packets. As the map was extended even more, players began placing them in common areas around the server. Spawn, the nether highways, and even the end dimension. Rebane ran some calculations and found that each map was sending two megabytes of data to the server per second. By having thousands of them loaded, it was sending gigabytes per second. The sheer amount of maps being loaded across the server at once caused it to go haywire. In computer hacking, sending too much information to a server is called a DDoS attack, or Distributed Denial of Service. All the major Minecraft servers have protection against these attacks, but only from the outside. These maps were causing 2B to perform an attack on itself from the inside, and so the server began to collapse. First, the Q server stopped working, causing players to be stuck in position zero, or unable to join at all. The online player list was reduced to a single column of players for the first time in ages. The majority of the community had no idea what was happening, and this confusion caused even more chaos. Many of those that survived the kicks were frozen in place and couldn't move for minutes at a time. Eventually, the map was pushed to the extreme limits, with 700,000 markers on it, stretching over 10 Minecraft blocks long. This single map was now more powerful than every previous crash and banning exploit in the server's history combined. You couldn't hold it, look at it, or even be online when someone else was looking at it. Right after the 700k marker count was reached, the server completely crashed. 2B2T's admin, Housemaster, immediately intervened by forcing a restart, which removed all of the green markers from the original map. He world-edited the crash map's location, while also implementing a temporary limit 
on how many item frames could be loaded in a single chunk. While 2B2T was safe again for now, the knowledge of how to perform the exploit began spreading, and was attempted on several other Anarchy servers as well. It's a common joke in the community that 2B2T players can find a way to weaponize anything that exists in Minecraft, but seeing how effective these maps were as weapons is actually shocking. The fact that my PC almost burst into flames recording this video, you better be hitting that subscribe button. Also follow me on my socials, but that's it. So take it easy, FitFam, and stay away from maps, alright?